everyone. It's me. It's Steve. It's Matt. It's Andy. Hello. We're Hello. back. Hi. This is the Indie Rift Podcast, the internet's number one indie gaming news reviews and previews podcast you've never heard of, probably. Uh, what's up, gentlemen? How are we doing? Good. We're doing, yeah, we're doing pretty good. Yeah, we're, we're doing pretty, pretty good right today. Yeah. Uh, me and Andy had a long discussion that you'll never hear about mice. Yeah. Mice. Oh. Yeah. All right. You know, it's not very mice. <laughs> and by mice, I mean nice. Me having a tummy ache, I, oh a tummy virus, not good. So uh, I, I may look like crap. Look at these circles around. What is happening to my face? Would you say right that now? we're about to have a shit show? <laughs> ah, nah, 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 we're good. We're good. I'm hydrating. We're good. We're good to go. I think okay. we're good to go. All right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we do a show about indie gaming. We talk about the, the cool games coming out. The cool games we've been playing, maybe some demos, and of course, indie game news, so that you don't have to peruse the internet for yourself. You can just sit here for about an hour, and you can listen to us talk about it, and if you're not listening and instead watching on the YouTube, you can do that easily. Go on to youtube.com slash at Indie Rift, and you could also check out Dev Dive, our developer interview podcast. We've interviewed well over 400 at this point. So mm-hmm. if you're not checking out that show to learn about how video games are made and all about the people who make them, what are you doing with your life? You're looking up indie game podcasts somehow and you're not listening to that? Shame on you, is what I have to say. Shame on you. Andy, who is this week's guest? Uh, you haven't posted last week's guest. That's Yeah, but, <laughs> but we didn't really talk about last week's guest either. So We, we did on last week's show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, uh, it's been a little chaotic, so I do apologize. So you're going to get two shows this week. Yay! Hooray! Um, so who are our two guests that people are going to get fulfilling their ear holes? So, Lucid. Oh my god, I can't wait to hear that That's episode. a good episode. Really good episode. And hopefully, we can schedule an interview for next week. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited about that one. That doggy don't care game. Oh, that, doggy don't the, care. And that oh, the boy. the art drives Matt crazy. It does. It drives me insane. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I look forward to it. Yeah, I but look... you guys you guys sold me on it though. Mm. I don't know. What like, I he's did. a kid. He's a kid trying his hardest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I... It's it's got a piss button. That's all that. Matters. It does. It does have a pee pee <laughs> button. You just that's go do all... do whiz that's, all over the place. That's the elevator pitch. Hey, what you do? Yeah. You piss. You piss. Indeed. Is there anything new on IndieRift.com, Andreas Asimakis? There ain't. There ain't nothing new. Uh, no new articles this uh, this time, uh, but I've been inspired, and oh. uh, I, I have some ideas that I want to run by you. I have some so, idea, ideas, as so like it were. Ideas. Yeah, ideas are good. Ideas are real good. Um, why don't we slide right into the Indie Game Adventures? This is where we talk about the games we have been playing that you can play also right now if you so choose um we're gonna start off i didn't play anything new so nothing is gonna come for me this is all the matt and andy extravaganza you each put i believe three games on this list so i got you covered i cannot wait to hear all about some of these games because some of these we had mentioned uh on a prior show uh i think last week we mentioned at least two of these so I am excited to hear all about them. But Foist, we're going to talk about a little bit of an oldie, a little classic, as it were, um, from 2020. And we're going to talk about Undermine. Yeah, so uh, me and Andy were talking earlier, and I don't think a single game that I have on here is, uh, like, younger than four years old. Uh, I've just... It's been a busy uh, couple weeks uh, with being sick, and then uh, I had a big vacation, so I've been digging into some older stuff uh, that I hadn't got a chance to play. And so Undermine has been on my list for a really long time. Um, A lot of people uh, in the roguelike community really, really love this game, and I can see why. It has a lot of charm. Uh, So it's a roguelike. Uh, Get that out of the way. Synergies, uh, all that fun stuff. Uh, But what makes this really fun and unique is that um, you're really just dealing with one weapon and this idea that you're diving down into this seemingly infinite mine. Um, And you just have your pickaxe and you can swing it and you can throw it. And uh, a lot of the power-ups that you get uh, augment the swing or the throw or give you some effects like, uh, you know, you pick up some gold and it will electrify enemies or uh, 
your thrown pickaxe will like light stuff on fire. And yeah, uh, I've been having a really good time like uh, unpeeling the layers of the onion of this game. There is so, so, so much character in this game. And I think that's really what makes it stand out is the, um, the multiple characters that you unlock who are the shopkeeps don't just, they're not just these like bland generic faces. Like they all have reasons for being there and they all have uh, a lot of character and their character art is really cool looking. Uh, and, and that's really what I think has drawn me into playing this game deeper. I also needed something like this. I needed like a roguelike to play and I feel like this was a solid pickup. Um, so yeah, if you're, you haven't played undermine, do it, play it. It's very fun. Yeah. And you know what, just, you know, we don't, you don't have to apologize for playing older classics. There are so many indie games that people have just missed throughout the years. Um, not everybody played undermine and it is one of those games that comes very highly recommended. And if it sounds up your alley, give it a go. Why not? Yeah, Very fun. Very fun. Indeed. Uh, the next game on the list is a little, little closer to its release date uh, of July 15th of this year. And that is one of Andy's games. And that is fallen leaf. Yeah. I played some, Oh, recent, this some, was the other game I was thinking of Andy. Stuff. Oh, were you? Yeah, when we were talking about what other game gravity, like a uh, Mega Man Gravity Circuit, this is the other mm, game that I was thinking of. Gotcha. Yeah. So this is it's a very um, classically retro inspired two D side scrolling platformer that's very much like it's Mega Man with a sort of mystic uh, medieval like backdrop. Um, there's an ancient evil, an ancient good. They both get sealed away in this chest. Mm. There's some dude named Leaf. You're out just walking around, bitch slapping enemies. Right. That's all you have in the beginning of the game. <laughs> so you're slapping the enemies around. Then you unleash the evil and the good. And the good's like, hey, the evil's out, but you freed me, so we're cool. So here's like your, your buster. It's a magic gauntlet. Um, Go get the evil energy because it's all that all got freed too. So it's very <clears throat> again up the platformer. It has like an overworld map like Super Mario Super Mario Brothers uh, world mm -hmm. for for the SNES, multiple paths. Um, but it's very cute. It's very nostalgic. It's a very simple like you know jump and shoot kind of a game. And mm -hmm. I love these kinds of games. It just, it takes me back to like simpler times. Um, I have a question. Cool, gorgeous animation too. I'm like, yeah, sure, go ahead. You unleash an ancient good, like basically the good God and the evil God, right? Yes, they were both okay. sealed away into the same device. And the good God gives you the basic weapon, correct? Correct, correct. Okay. Yeah. So why are there better weapons out in the world? And why did God just gave you a weapon? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, like why wouldn't the God just have all the weapons or like the best one? Well, because then it wouldn't, there wouldn't be a game. Well, that's what know? I'm saying. Just get, gotta, they, they don't gotta, explain it in any way. They won't be like, here's, no. well, it here's looks like, like it looks like a basic it, it, gun because right. the ancient when I was sealed correct away, me, all my good stuff was taken. Correct me if I'm wrong. It looks like it's not guns necessarily that you plot get, hole. but people. That's a plot hole. You get you get different characters. <laughs> it's a plot hole. So there's different abilities. So the it has a Castlevania like upgrade structure where your basic gauntlet, if you get power ups in the level, it like buffs it up. So mm -hmm. you get oh, cool. So you get like it, it travels further the fireball, and then it's like a double fireball if you upgrade it a second time. Um, and if you get hit, you lose. And then I mean, a triple fireball. Fireball. Exactly. Yeah. And then you get and like a, spells. And a quadruple fireball. You get spells and weapons as you beat bosses and progress through the game. It's again very cute, very wholesome little game. Um, it's amazing how I am stupidly good at these games. Like, I don't. It's just <laughs> fucking hum, humble. It's just humble if they're, brag. If they're done it's well, just, you're you're just, better at them. It's just like isn't it just great how I'm listen, amazing, guys. guys. Like, it's it's all the Mega Man training. It's just it it's in my it's in my hands, dude. It's in mm. there like forever. It's like embedded into the fiber of my bones. 
and when? my flesh and my thingy tips. Does it? Can you guys believe how good I am? I'm so good at these games, guys. <laughs> it's like it's like a good Souls like, and which are really only the Souls games, really. Um, you know, you get the muscle memory, and I if you can I love it. how eight bit the art of this game is. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful, and you can tell there's like three animation frames for the walk. It's like yeah. you know, there's like that in the middle. And the that, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's perfect. Yeah, indeed, looks awesome. Speaking of perfect, this is a perfect segue to Veritas, which was a game, or Veritas, oh yeah, uh, which is a game we did mention uh, at the, mm-hmm. on the last show. Yes, this was our steal of the week. Indeed, it, ju- it just came out last did, week. So, so you, I, so you did install it. I stole, so I stole it. So I stole cool. it. Uh, this is from Color Grave. Uh, tell God, us all about this it. Looks mm-hmm. So good. This, this is the kind of game that it, it, it makes me grateful that Mina mm-hmm. from uh, Yacht Club isn't out just yet. Okay, it's a good little holdover. It's a very, it's Link's Awakening to a T. It's a very like Zelda inspired Game Boy color looking game. Yeah. Um and all the mechanics are just straight up Zelda. It's like instead of a sword, you got a pickaxe. Instead of a grappling hook, you have a lasso. You get magic spells and relics, you find keys, keys open doors, you progress. Very simple, very straightforward. And again, it's just good, clean, easy, fun. Um there was one of the relics that i really like playing with it's like it warps you to a different point on in the room so mm-hmm. let's say it's all about puzzles too so let's say it's like you're you're like in a corner and you flip a switch and like a barricade just goes up you have to get on the other side use that relic to like warp out of that spot mm-hmm. to like into an opening so a lot of that stuff a lot of block puzzles too i've, I've realized uh grabbing boulders and throwing them uh, to activate switches again very classic like the big bosses flash bright red when you smack him in the face that's nice. like that's like is it is it a as Nintendo fast, stable is it as fast playing as it looks the run button is a game changer oh there's a run button there's a run well, yeah button. right so yeah. zelda links awakening there was i think it was a feather that made you dash forward mm-hmm. if i'm not mistaken but this is like a shit you just run in any direction and there's no stamina burn. You just run as often as you want. One weird thing is, so you have eight directional movement, but you can just swipe in four directions. I can't like diagonal swipe an enemy. It's like in my uh-huh. upper left or upper. So it's kind of weird because I want to half the time. Yeah. But I can't. Interesting. Um, you know what is, game did odd. that to me that bothered me and I had to like get over it because of how good the game was, was Moonlighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh I, shit! You could, yeah, that's right. I loved Moonlighter, and I had to like really train my brain in that game because of like it was like a modern indie, so I was kind of like, okay, I should be able to strike in eight directions. Mm. But yeah, you could only four cardinal directions. That was it. Too many yeah, animations, bro. Too many animations. <laughs> so many. Digital animations. Sun just didn't have the money. It's too many. <laughs> Listen, these things happen, okay? Yeah, it's super cheap. I think it's like seven bucks or five bucks, somewhere along those lines. Um, Six ninety nine right now. There you go. So pick it up and have a grand old time. Seems worth it. Yeah, I'm, I'm missing a, a a game on here I didn't open yet, so I want to do that real quick. Uh, so yeah, go check out Veritas. I assume that's how you say it. It's either Veritas or Veritas. I don't there's know. No I think vo- it's Veritas. There's, there's no voice acting, so it could be either or. <laughs> oh, Veritas. Uh, hey, Matt. Hey, what's up? Tell me about Ziggurat. Hey, this game's 10 years old. <laughs> yeah? I've never heard of it. Like, Can you tell me about like, it? I was like, what year is it, Matthew? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Listen, this it's game... like a. It's no, it's I know. Classic. No, you're right. Okay, you're right. 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 You're right. I, I, I have swag in this closet from like 20 packs ago. I couldn't believe were, that this was were, 10 years old. When they were old. showing this game for the first time. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe that this was 10 years old. Like, I, I Milk, brought the trailer. Stone Studios. And uh, I looked up the trailer, and the official launch trailer for it was posted 10 years ago. Um, so, for those unfamiliar, uh, Ziggurat is a game about you playing as a wizard trapped in a dungeon. 
Uh, it's an ever-changing dungeon. This is a roguelike game, uh, and it is a boomer shooter, uh, mm. all in one. Uh, you're trying to escape the dungeon and beat the big bosses at the end. Uh, there's really not a ton of lore to it. I'm sure that there's a bunch of people on the internet that will be mad at me for saying that, because um, there are some like lore dumps that you can get. Like there's like little uh, uh, you you like pick up papers that have like a paragraph of lore on it. Um, but yeah, so this game is all about picking up different staffs, spells, uh, weapons, all, all kinds of stuff, combining them all together. You get like four, you can have four at a time and just go and ham on just waves of enemies in rooms, uh, boomy shooty style. And it is so much fucking fun that I am angry at myself that I hadn't picked this up sooner. Mm-hmm. Um, there's multiple characters to unlock. They all play differently. Uh, like I've, I've only unlocked up to the third character, who's my favorite. Um, you start with like a basic, uh, you know, just like your basic wand spell, and usually you get one more before you start the dungeon, and then you'll pick up more stuff as you go. And uh, as you level up, you'll unlock like relics and cards that will upgrade your run, stuff like uh, increasing your mana pool for some of your weapons, uh, or uh, increased health, or... Uh, you every time you start a battle, you gain more health back, um, uh, increased uh, defense, stuff like that. And it's just diving into this dungeon of ever-filling, mon- like more and more monsters every fucking time you go to the next level. Uh, and it's just super fun. Uh, the enemies are great. They're wacky. You can like, they're like carrots that will fucking run at you and try to fucking kill you. There's the carrots? Carrots. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> But then, like, in that same room, there'll be these, like, weird flamingo-looking things that are, like, fucking flinging acid at you or, like... Acid flamingos, the, yep. Acid, you know, classic. Floor or, strikes or, again. Or, like, the hell faces from, like, Doom. They have, like, a bunch of those. Um, the boss fights are super fun and interesting. Uh, I think my favorite boss right now is uh, Madame Audrey, which is obviously a callback to Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, and it's Audrey. This, this plant that, like, clamshells itself, and then every once in a while it'll open up. Uh, and you shoot its heart, uh, but as that's happening, it's like sprouting all these plants that are shooting a bunch of shit at you. So you're managing your timing of like taking those things out so that the room doesn't just fill up with them, and then being like, "Fuck, it's closing now. It just opened. I wasn't looking at it. I was shooting one of its stupid fucking legs." Uh, and yeah, it's just frantic, uh, boomy shooty fun um, that is well worth picking up now. Uh, as much as it was 10 years ago. I actually bought this and the sequel on s- the Steam Summer Sale uh, for like 10 bucks. So I'll be sure to be back with the sequel once I uh, get deep enough into this. Oh, one of my favorite things, at the end of your run, uh, there's just like a cage in the ground, and there's a guy standing over it who I assume is some kind of like burial guy, uh, and the cage just fills with the bones of your enemies. So the more enemies that you kill, just like the more bones drop into this thing at the end of the I run. love this. And it is it is so satisfying. <laughs> I like uh, collecting yeah. bones. I am it's so bad. good. It's so, 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 so much fun. Stupid Indeed. fun. Dumb fun. Real quickly, before we get on to uh, Andy's final game, give us that sweet, sweet No Man's Sky update, Matt. It's the No Man's Sky update time, guys. Uh, it's been about three <laughs> months, I think, since the last one. Uh, which was also awesome. Uh, this one is particularly cool compared to a lot of the other ones uh, for a, a, a number of reasons. So Sean Murray, uh, 5.0 just came out. This is uh, Worlds Part 1, which is already exciting because that means there's going to be a Part 2. Um, no, and Sean there Murray, are in you. You shut up. Uh, <laughs> History of the World Part 1. Um, but so Sean Murray described this update as bringing technology back from the future. And what he meant by that is in the development of Light No Fire, their next game, um, they've developed technologies for the procedural generation in that game and have brought that procedural gen tech and uh, a lot of like the rendering tech Mm -hmm. back to No Man's Sky and implemented some of it here, which is super fucking cool. I love that. Um, So this update is just like a full refresh of the universe. Um, It is cooler planets, uh, better, like, weather systems, which is super cool. Storms look absolutely insane right now. Like, if if you dive into a planet and there's a storm happening, it's fucking crazy. If you're walking while you're on a planet and there's a storm coming, it's fucking scary as shit. 
Um, the the uh, biomes are just like super varied. There's more animals than ever. There's a whole new type of animal, which is pretty cool. It's like these plant-like animals that are fucking really cool looking. Um, water has waves now, which sounds stupid, but it's absolutely mind-blowing. Um, you can like land on the ocean. Uh, it's just chock full to the brim of making this game even better than it already is and like continuing to exceed the goal that I feel like they had set when they originally released the game. Uh, it also comes along with an expedition that is very clearly taking some inspiration from Helldivers where you're going around trying to destroy these like bug hives on a bunch of the planets. Uh, I haven't dug into that yet, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. There's a whole new like enemy type uh, and combat type. Whoa, I see the waves. It. Right? Isn't that fucking cool? Yeah, man. Got some waves. Um, I don't I don't really know how else to say it, but uh over the past like eight years, this game has solidified itself as one of my favorite games of all time. And if my ranting before has not gotten you into this game right. and you're looking for a survival game, you're looking for a space exploration game, you wanna be a fucking pirate, you wanna be a smuggler, you wanna be a fucking bounty hunter, you wanna fucking go on planets and scan fauna and you wanna categorize and catalog the universe. You can do that. You want to fucking build a farm and fucking live off the farm. You can do that shit. You can do anything you want in this game in a, in a very, like not anything you want, but there is so much to this game. It's hard to describe. And like, really, I can't wait to see what their next game is, but I also just can't wait to see if this is just part one. I am. I don't even understand what part two of this update is going to be. It's crazy. Anyway, I love this game. You love, love this it. game. Love it so much. We know. You, I know you, you know. You, you talk many about it. I know. Uh, the next game is not quite eight years. It's not quite ten years. It's a little sooner than that. It's a little. <laughs> it's a little less ancient. Um, just a year it's ago. It's fresh. -ish. Yes, just Fresher. a year ago. And I remember this game, Andy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can't wait for you to tell me about it because I don't believe I actually got my my mitts on this one. And this is Gravity Circuit. So I think I spoke about this game a millennia ago, back when we did Indies Nuts, and um. My brother came by for a visit, and when he comes by, it's like, let's play something Mega Man. And I was like, this exists. You haven't played it yet, or you haven't played it yet. Glowing just, recommendation. Just, this exists. Yeah. Let's just, let's, just, let's just, uh, yeah. This is the thing. I have this. Let's play it. Hey. So it is a Mega Man X-like with melee combat, which is kind of wild because again all the all the bones in my hands are programmed for jumpy shooty mm -hmm. and this is you're getting up close in enemies faces like, jumpy punchy punch them in the face there's like a grapple mechanic you can grab them latch onto them throw them at enemies um as far as the game format it's very standard there's eight bosses who have all had this mysterious virus Woo! Mm -hmm. uh and you gotta like track them all down beat them all up, get their special circuit. There's actually a really good story here that caught me off guard that I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that plot twist. That's kind of cool. Um, great soundtrack. The one cool thing is that kind of deviates from the Mega Man X or Mega Man uh, formula is you don't get a boss's weapon per se when you beat them. You unlock techniques at a local shop mm -hmm. and, you can, and you can equip them to your robot guy via little circuits so let's say you want to pick a double jump and a giant laser beam and an ability to let you um kind of hover down slowly when you jump uh like kind of like, like a feather fall kind of deal kind of like you're, you're, you're building your own mech exactly cool. or like you could do like okay i want a shield buff with a little ground spike ability and i want uh faster punches so you can know and there's three uh loadouts you can like have them all just set and just cycle through them as you're playing the game oh that's um, cool so it's 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 high experimentation with all the abilities and there's like i think in total like maybe 16 you can get uh but then the combinate but then the combinations yeah. of that is... and then there's passive ones too that you can apply to your character like when you fall in the pit you won't fall in the pit or you can uh rebuild your your life when you stand still like those kinds of things you can also mm. add and it's three slots of each category so there's three slots for passive and three for the active abilities and they're very street fighter super kind of a mm. like it's like a up an r1 or like a left an r1 it's like screen goes black you know 
fancy sound effects and you unleash this mega attack, which is like, you know, would drain your energy meter, which you can build up by killing enemies as you play. I bet speedrunners love this game. Dude, there's a there's a speedrun mode you unlock when you finish the game. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. And I bet there's like an optimized already there's like an optimized loadout like three yeah. loadouts that you should take through the game for this route. Yeah. And I gotta, has, I'm going to look up a speed run of this game after this episode and watch it. It has one of my favorite things in these games, which is a Mega Man X6 callback that's rescuing other robots in the levels. Mm. So you're always searching around to find these guys because those are tied to the passive ability. So the more you rescue, the more you can buy from that shop. That's cool. That's kind of Yeah, cool. that's really cool. Yeah. Gives you it's more fun, gives you looks, incentive outside of just, you know, petting yeah. the dog. It's it's a yeah, of course. Mm. <laughs> speaking of flops uh, let's get into the indie news report uh we have quite a few things to talk about here uh Mm -hmm. really not great news pretty much there's a lot of bummer no, there's some, energy. There's some there's, all right news. Some, I put some good and Matt put some good ones in there too, which Indeed. I appreciate. So, yeah. <laughs> a, a game I was actually looking uh, forward to playing, um, and I was gonna dive in on Game Pass, but now I don't think much I go to do that. Uh, Flintlock. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, looks like they're they did they, they didn't do very well and. They may be facing some layoffs. Uh, this comes from Glitched.Online. Uh, Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn, Dev A44 Games might be facing layoffs. Uh, this was posted today. A44, A44 Games, the developer behind the recently released action RPG Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn, could be facing mass layoffs. The game released earlier this month to mostly mixed to positive reviews from critics and fans. A44 44 Games reported that thanks to its inclusion on xbox game pass the game attracted about 500,000 players since its release a new report claims that those numbers weren't nearly substantial enough according to a reset era member going by the name of viper uh they recently posted on the message board <laughs> quote i have a friend of a friend who resigned from the company he's expecting massive layoffs does not bode well sadly now of course take that with a grain of salt this could be yeah, all this this, this last sentence is exactly what i was thinking when they said it's attracted 500,000 players uh does uh, despite launching with a healthy 500,000 players on the game it's unclear what the retention rate was or how many stuck around to keep playing uh for double a AA game with the advantage of being available to a wider player player base on Xbox Game Pass those aren't very impressive numbers when you compare them to other titles for example Chia or Tachia um had over 1 million players when it released um so it's just and the article continues. You could read that on glitched.online. Um, I'd like to start us off by saying this kind of goes back to what does Game Pass actually offer to a dev that, like, fi- so yes, you got 500,000 players. Um, a huge percentage of that is Game Pass, which you got paid for up front. Were many, like, how many? Sales, do you think that cost them? Was it well, worth? So, did it offset the cost that that here, Microsoft gave them? You know, here, kind of here, here's what I I I I'm struggling with that argument for this particular game because uh, this did have some a little bit of marketing behind it. You know, they they did an okay job, but I think that without Game Pass, this game wouldn't have cracked twenty thousand players. Mm. I don't think even that many people would have played it. Never mind retain that many players. I I struggle to. I I, I would guarantee that not a lot of people uh, were retained out of that five hundred thousand. It just I don't know about you guys, or I know me and Andy kind of talked about it a little bit, but this game really did not grab me. Um, yeah. I wanted it to because it had such a cool idea. The yeah. the reason the the only reason why because I you know I was kind of going on to make this point. The the this genre has a very rabid fan base that I think just because of the the way it was marketed, what it looked like, the hype that that it got more like last year, I want to say was when it was like really like, whoa, look at this game. This game looks like it's going to be really freaking cool. Um, I think they could have gotten a huge 
day one kind of surge from that community but i don't know dollar value like with the game you know what i mean like it it could well, have been a thing now again there are people that ask for refunds but i don't think this is a refundable game like it, it's it it's not broken um yeah. you know it's to me it's like you take a risk when you're when you're getting a game in this genre that's not made by fromsoft you know like you these games are typically not what you they're not as grand and perfect and and uh they don't always hit that mark uh like remnant from the ashes like that game was rough around the edges but it had a huge fan base uh, yeah. the game did really well when it came when it came out yeah. but it was fucking well, so, janky as hell i mean i think that's kind of what it is right is that um regardless of how many sales it would have had whether it's on a, a, a game pass or, or or whatnot uh i think that a lot of this community when it comes to the double a style mm-hmm. uh souls likes games uh it's a lot of word of mouth and mm-hmm. word of mouth travels fast uh and it travels even faster when you have an install base like game pass and i don't know that it would have exceeded whatever amount of money that it got from game pass but i can almost guarantee you that it being on game pass and having that many players up front saying i don't know if this is that good was definitely not good for the game Mm -hmm. uh because i i i my problems with the game are very upfront it has nothing to do with it being a souls like it has everything to do with the the design itself of the game and i think that a lot of people who are very into souls likes and uh, understand the formula in those games that works would see this within the first hour and say uh say it mm-hmm. i yeah. think Go i ahead, think Andy. this might be an instance where having a game pass deal might have been beneficial to the dev because looking at the steam player base like the concurrent players and just what their record highs were on the launch day and then what's been happening since and where it stands on the on the on the bestseller list uh, i feel like they may have gotten a nice chunk of money um that would have likely dwarfed any amount of sales they would have gotten on xbox having launched without being on game pass so i think this could have worked in their favor like listen the game is very mid like i played it for a little while it didn't hit with me like like Matt was saying, you know, or you were saying also, Steve, like a Souls like is a very particular kind of thing, and you're not gonna get like a Lies of P every time. And that game mm-hmm. sold like sold a million. Yeah, that's not even counting the, and that was on Game Pass too. Um, and that was strong word of mouth that game. Yeah, you know, yeah, that that's was, what I mean. Is this well, that was like, a, that just was like, like that. A, yeah. Once they find their darling, they latch onto it, and this game just wasn't it. And I feel, um, Game Pass gave it exposure for sure i mean 500 players isn't nothing to sniff at but i put less than an hour or two in this game and i was like this is not i'm yeah. not feeling this at all again yeah uh this just goes to the point of xbox game pass i think as long as it doesn't continue to rise and become cost prohibitive eventually but it's great for gamers uh you didn't have to invest anything other than what right. you've already invested in the ecosystem you got to try it and you moved on um yeah and depending on how much cash these developers are getting up front, um, it could be good for them. But I think ultimately it's it's that that scale is very much tipped in the Microsoft's favor and players favor rather than the developers. That's just yeah. an opinion based on kind of, you know, the trends, of what we've been dealing with. Yeah. Um, moving on here. uh this uh, this actually goes to speaks on what we spoke about last week, which was the humble uh, games closure. Um, so, Andy, why don't you tell us a little bit about this one? Yeah, this upset me. So, you know, we heard that uh, humble games sort of a closed shop on their publishing wing and uh, not sustainable, and they let go of about forty team members that were handling the publishing aspect of humble games. And then, you know, once this news hit, I'm sure you, like I was thinking, um, when will we see the effects of this? Because a lot of the games that we cover on the show, even the devs we bring on, De- on Dev Dive, um, are tied to Humble Games. Mm-hmm. And um, now we're seeing the first uh, sort of effect of this of this closure. And it comes from the developer Squid Shock, who just released Bo, um, 
Path of the Teal Lotus, which is a great game, by the way. Uh, it's I purchased it. I haven't played it yet. Just a demo, but uh, it's an amazing little science school adventure mini game. Those are wondering with amazing hand drawn art. Um, they're sort of uh, in a rut because they were they relied on the publisher for updates and post launch support, and now they're kind of stuck. Mm-hmm. And as you're reading through their through their Twitter feed, they're just saying we may launch a Patreon. We're not sure what we're going to do at this point, um, but I'll, I'll read some other statement to get a, a clearer picture here. We want to give you an update on Bo, Path of the Teal Lotus. We're really proud of how the launch went, and it's been great hearing all of your feedback on our game. Amazing game. That being said, our launch hasn't been without its challenges. Most of you will know that our publisher, Humble Games, has effectively shut down laying off all 36 team members. This took us by complete surprise. (laughs) And for a small development team like us, it was a critical blow to our post-launch support. We are now in a different situation when it comes to updating the console ports as both porting and QA support was tied into our deal with Humble. We are actively pursuing all available avenues to allow us to roll out updates to console versions, but we regret to say this may take some time to put into place. We want to reassure players that we will get this resolved. We're working on updates, yada, yada, yada. Um, so, yeah, like, again, you, you're a small dev team, and you rely yeah. on a, a publisher, which has, has some cachet. You know, Humble, not a small company. Um, people know them in, you know, in, the, in the gaming circle. Just up and says, we're done doing this, and they have no prior warning, and they're just stuck without that support right after their game launches. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it it sucks. You you kind of wonder. I mean, I'm sure the, the you know humble wrote specific clauses in a contract and yada yada. But you wonder if like if this kind of action or this kind of of situation is a breach of contract in some way. Like if you if mm. they if they were signed on for specific service goods and services that you know humble was supposed to provide. You know, are they entitled to any sort of legal compensation for breaking that? Or does go, you know, shutting the business, you know, is the only way to get out of these contracts and guess yeah, what? Yeah, to like did. eschew the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's it's one of those things that like you you wish that the industry was able to take those things and say, here's where you're gonna go instead. Like we're we're gonna we're gonna sell your publishing rights or we're gonna transfer your publishing rights to another whatever you know like i don't know just it's just sucks. it's it's shitty because this is when they should be celebrating like a successful launch and, right. yeah right and, 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 looking, and now there's and, this rain cloud hanging out and looking at their sales and seeing you know their profit margins and now they're like shit we have, we have to fund post-launch support ourselves now not our publisher like right. that wasn't a factor for them at all and now right. that it's like it, it just sucks all around and i hope that they get the support from either patreon or someone else swoops in and, and and does the heavy lifting for them but again it's a great game and i recommend it you guys should all check it out yeah and, and i can't imagine they get you know 100 percent of sales either because i'm yeah. sure humble's still collecting their cut. i wonder how that <laughs> even works like yeah. you're done by well they, they you know they did get it over the finish line so the work was done but still it's um it's a little yeah. annoying uh coral island saluted them yeah i saw friends of the show indeed uh some good news regarding <laughs> stardew valley <laughs> this is good stardew valley is is one of those uh evergreen games i think it it it's it can do no most... wrong enduring games it can do no wrong andy it (laughs) could it i mean just a couple years ago they got the multiplayer ad it might have been just a year ago i don't know it seems like forever ago yeah i mean that like changed the industry it's just one of those those indie games it's one of those games yeah Yeah. uh this comes from eurogamer.net stardew valley creator will quote never charge money for dlc or updates (laughs) <laughs> and the uh, I love the tag here. The quote, the quote of the article is screen cap this and shame me if I ever violate this. So, <laughs> I love that. Uh, so Stardew Valley creator Eric Concerned Ape Barone uh, has said he'll never charge money for a DLC or update for as long as I live. This just in uh, Eric Concerned Ape assassinated 
by <laughs> by, by <laughs> electronic <big> arts. <laughs> Uh, earlier today, the developer posted on social media site X, the console and mobile ports of Stardew Valley, Valley 1.6 update are still in progress following the PC release back in March. The ports and the next PC update are still in progress, said Barone. I know it's taking a long time. It's on my mind every minute. I've personally been working on the mobile port every day. I will announce when there is any meaningful news, example, a release date. Hope you're having a good summer. A fan followed up this post to say people won't complain about the wait as long as everything you add is completely free. Kind of a dick thing to say. Yeah. Um, I swear, and then uh, Concerned Ape uh, replied, I swear on the honor of my family name, I will Jesus. never charge money for yeah, a DLC or update it. for as long as I live. Screen I cap this. this and shame me if I ever violate this oath. So I, just, I love how committed he is to yeah. it. Yeah. I mean... When you're that popular of a game, you yeah. don't have to ever charge for Makes DLC. Money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, how many, like, think of the three, think of three people that you know that play Stardew Valley. Yeah. I know a how lot. How many of them. times did they buy it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> at least, at least three times. <laughs> you know, it, it's like, on the I, Switch now, I guys. It twice. I bought it twice. And I am not that gamer. Like, it's it's yeah. not, you know what I mean? But I have it twice. I have it on Steam, and I have it on Switch. <laughs> so, whatever. Yeah, I, I own this game on Steam, Switch, mm -hmm. and I think PlayStation, and I've put maybe four hours into the One hour PC version. into each port. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're accumulating quite a, quite a rep. Um, so good for you. Uh, good for them. Uh, thank you very much for not being a dickhole. That's yeah, really good job. Great. Uh speaking of good jobs and, and rad stuff, uh I'm assuming Matt put this in here. Yeah, yeah, so I don't know, I was just uh surfing on Twitter and I came across this post that I thought was really cool. So this is one of the developers for uh from Hello Games uh of No Man's Sky Fame, like we were just I was just talking about a minute ago. Um and he's talking about uh bringing some technology to uh the PSVR two version of the game. Uh and he's referencing a uh, tweet that he had written months ago about um, some foveated something that I'll never understand. Uh, but yes. he said, 11 months ago, I wrote this post. Uh, uh, this positive response came as a huge surprise. I was a coder responsible for the original PSVR 2 support for No Man's Sky 2. And then a few months later, made another resolu resolution improvement where the response was that NMS uh, No Man's Sky was still too blurry even though I personally thought it was better than many decent RTX cards, I really felt that I had let people down. The subsequent foveated rendering was a huge experiment and basically R&D in a very pure sense. Hmm. We generally did not know foveated rendering would work, uh, with such a large engine. And he, he kind of keeps going on uh, that train of thought uh, about how he brought new wa the water and all the, the new stuff that I was talking about to the PSVR 2, but how happy he was that he was allowed to do this kind of R&D project at... Hello Games and how unique that ability is uh, inside the gaming industry. And I just think that having that um, kind of a culture at an indie game studio or any game studio really is supremely unique and just really, really cool to hear. Mm. Yeah, to invest time and money into something that may not be work, work or beneficial or make you money yeah. is is a risk that very 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 few uh let alone big companies would make yeah. but a, a smaller you know independent sort of uh i mean hello games is is pretty big at this point but they're still you know small compared to the big the big fish in the pond but like yeah i agree with you um i think that you know we're not going to get a lot of these stories not a lot of people are, are going to be doing this but it's really cool uh to see that anyone would yeah I, I just thought this was a cool little uh twitter twitter pickup yeah um this next one's actually really interesting um and i didn't know this was a problem so yeah me either i was like what is the what is this news thing trying to tell me yeah so gamesradar.com uh brings us this story which is steam insider claims valve is working on a system to ensure players get their season pass content. Okay. Um, the storefront will apparently soon track commitments. Uh, 
So I guess commitments from devs to people who to buy their, the game. Yeah, to their users. Uh, Valve is, support, is supposedly working on a way to ensure that the season pass buyers get the content that's promised to them. Data miner and Steam database creator Pavel Jundik, Jundik recently claimed that Steam is working on a season pass survey for developers that will only be internal to the digital storefront and kept hidden from everyday consumers. Uh, customers, excuse me. Uh, the survey will apparently let Steam track commitments of the high-level deliverable and their dates to verify that customers received the content promised. Up until now, there's been no way to ensure that everything promised in a season pass roadmap will actually come out in time or at all. You just had to put trust in whatever publisher or developer you're giving money to. And we, as we've learned time and time again, big companies are often on the side of simply making money. Uh, I want to see if there's any... Uh, okay, here we go. People who bought the Redfall Bite Back Edition, for example, got refunds for Sorry. refunds for the upgrade after Microsoft <laughs> closed down the studio. Either way, it's nice to see Valve potentially tracking season pass pledges without players needing to trust publishers on their word. Yeah. So I I put this in here, and I think I'm having I had the same thought as you guys, where this is an interesting thing to build, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to think of a time where a company has been called out for not delivering specifically yeah. season seasonal pass content to players and there hasn't been any kind of um a refund or uh you know what makes yeah. sense to me is like maybe a game that gives a roadmap and is like buy our game now because we promise in a year this is going to come out mm -hmm. and then the game stops but, and then you're like, well, that well, sucks. But it, yeah, it does. But then, like, does this remove the early access label from games? Because an early access label, the reason that Valve put that in place was for a very similar reason, mm -hmm. right? Was to let consumers know, hey, yeah, it's like, a disclaimer. This is a disclaimer mm -hmm. to let you know that this is an unfinished game and it may mm -hmm. remain right. unfinished. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it, this is the system that they're putting in is for the games that aren't early access or not claiming to be early access and are doing early access like stuff, um, mm -hmm. like tying updates to a season pass, um, you know, additional levels, additional uh, you know stories or, or quest lines in an RPG or you know whatever it may be. Um, I can be interesting think of a to see game. like. You know, see example. like the scarlet letter on the people who fucking don't deliver. You know what I mean? Like you're surfing around the fucking yeah. Steam Steam store. Like and it's just like <laughs> I was. I was just like more hung up on the whole because when you read it, it sounds like they're trying to guarantee in some fashion mm -hmm. that you'll get the items you were promised or purchased. But then I was thinking to myself, how how could Steam mandate that to a developer like if you promised x content you have to make it but then you know it mentions refunds which i, I yeah. get that piece of it um they're just forced but, refunds but, but, then, but then i thought that's not standard practice like if you have a roadmap and you can't deliver a piece of it right well are you not giving people back their money the consumers had to make the complaint and make and it the onus was on the consumer Steam is right. trying to make the onus on the pub on the publisher slash yeah. developer. Yeah, that uh, it does. It does. It just it changes yeah. where the the ball is in the court, and yeah. it also makes it easier for uh, consumers to to vet uh, yeah. studios. Yeah. yeah, and also not to over deliver or over promise. I mean, like yeah, it could keep it could, it could keep devs in check. Like, mm -hmm. hey, if you're gonna put this out there, make sure you can deliver on that because we're gonna come back to you if you don't get this content to mm -hmm. your to your customers so i wanted to make sure i played something to talk about this week uh, nerd. because i uh, gestalt like the more i played gestalt i was like uh, I, I i can't force myself to enjoy it i was trying to i feel um, bad for you dude i feel like okay. between both of us you are the mo most hyped about that game yeah man it every time i, I sh it showed it showed really really well and it was like yeah it did hey there's building blocks here i can't wait to see what you iterate you know, on and they didn't funny? iterate on anything it's funny if you listen to the interview with the uh, the lucid developer. Mm -hmm. He knew. He was mm -hmm. like, "Oh, I knew that game wasn't going to be all it was going to be." 
he had a sense that it was just interesting. He was like, mm, it looked like all show and no, it was all fluff and no content. Yeah. So that, that was a good, that was a good conversation, by the way. Um, but yeah. So, but I have, play? I have something new to be hype about because, you do. I, so I was looking at um, the Steam, you know, brand new what's out now, and I was looking for anything that had a demo. Just looks mm. cute. Um, and seems very interesting. A game called so Clean Fall uh, came across my dashboard, and I just I had to give it a try. It is a um, resource gathering kind of descend into the madness um, game, where you're playing a cleaner of this planet or this whatever, um, and you have a drill sort of thing that you could just drill into the into the earth to go down the further you go down the more rare the uh minerals or whatever you can you can find um and but the more dangerous the enemies become and then of course when it becomes full nighttime scary time business all the big shit comes out um but you can't really go back up so you're just gonna you're gonna die at some point. So, but so I don't know if death is inevitable because as you're going around, you do find things like uh, drones, turrets, ways to like defend yourself during those points. Mm -hmm. um, I defended myself horribly um, <laughs> when I was messing around with it because I didn't really understand what I was doing. But you essentially dive deep. And when it comes to the the crazy, everything's coming to kill you, you use all the things you gathered to build a mini just, base. Yeah. And hunker down and like just try and survive until it calms down and then you could dig deeper again. I love the tentacle beast as a chase. Dude, yeah, this it's like, like yeah. the corridor. descent the descent into madness oh, of just man. the trailer has yeah. me kind of excited to try it's this. I, I also really to... difficult. <laughs> I will say that. And, Andy, I want you to know that when you said, oh, wow, this looks cute. Yeah. I was staring was, at yeah. giant slithery monsters. And then I watched the video. Yeah. But I have a question. Yeah. Why is it? Why is the release date last week and it's coming out in 2025 and there's already 34 positive reviews? I'm confused. It, there, there is. <laughs> so it's very confusing, but I think. Don't know what that means. They, because the, the game page is a demo page. It's not the oh, game okay. page with a demo. Oh, the I see. page is the a the demo, demo page. came out last oh, week. Oh, it's legit says clean fall demo. Yes. So they released gotcha. the demo as its own right. Steam page. Yeah, um, then, I then I click on the clean fall. Yes. Actual yep. story. Yeah. yeah that, that, that makes sense. And you can add <laughs> and you can add God that to your it, wish Steven. list. Yes. <laughs> just added this shit to my wish list. Yeah. yeah it's it's awesome. I mean, I would even recommend just playing the demo because it's gonna. a good time. It's oh, yeah, it it's really happening. is a, uh, it's it's creepy. Like you can so the way it, it works is your plasma blaster that you that you use to cut through all the, the dirt and stuff, you get to harder rock and there's uh you press a, a button to activate like an auto drill kind of thing and then like uh -huh. you could do like the straight line or and like bend it a little bit but you basically charge a beam and then it shoots this beam through the rock and makes this like tunnel that you designed oh, that's so cool. that, so then you can go through the other thing you do is your your blaster that can kill like really weak enemies does diddly dick against anything else but you can use that to blast yourself up and into stuff so if oh, you want to like get jump. a yeah kind of you can still jump but you can so you could charge up your cannon it's like oh the big thing is in is in front of me um you jump shoot the cannon so it launches you back into like a little crevice so that you could kind of like platform your way out and mm. you could use that the drill and your 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 cannon to kind of launch yourself into different areas to try and get away from danger or to like reach a, a really difficult place you could dig in any direction so you you literally make your path through the dirt any way that you want. So like, I, I you know I I went all the way to the right for some reason. I was like I'm gonna go down, but then I'm just gonna go to the right. I went to the right, and then I found this like little. It looks like a, a, like game equivalent of like a chest. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, where that's cool. But it had the hard rock above it, and then a and then a pit that I couldn't see what was below it. So I'm like, okay, 
I used the charge up ability, broke through the rock, landed on top of it with a little sliver. And then I kind of went around it to come up from underneath if I could. And I was able to like avoid falling into that pit. You don't die when you fall. Like you could just refall. You just keep falling. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't know what danger was down there. I didn't know like what enemies were down there. And I didn't know how far it would it would make me fall. Because again, the further you go down, the more dangerous. There's at the very so when you die, you go back to the top and it starts over. But there's like a door that's locked and it says if you go down, I think 450 meters, you unlock that area. So like that's what I'm working towards now. Um, but I haven't been able to survive my first night because this shit <laughs> is hard. But it's all about going around, finding resources, finding uh, power-ups, finding drones and turrets and mines and whatever you can. And you use the minerals or whatever to build, like, structure uh, pieces to, like, protect yourself. Pretty cool. It's better. To me, that's that's a much more interesting than, like, the Dome Keeper genre that we've been getting where it's all tied to the one spot of, at the top. This mm. is more like you build it as you're going down and build it around yourself, which it's is like, like a, a reverse, little It's like a v- reverse dome keeper. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, totally. Um, and it's got a lot of charm, so give cool. it a try. Yeah. Um, what else we got? We got Silk Bulb Test. Oh my God. Andy, you guys. I'm going to say this for yes. probably the 15th time. <laughs> On this podcast, this is episode 10, I think. Yes, yes. Please get <laughs> therapy. No, please see <laughs> this games some like kind this of therapist. Are my therapist? Yeah, that's he. he this is how he this Andy, is therapists. This is not okay. therapy. So, okay, this is let clockwork. Me, me, clockwork orange. Let me just. I'll put it this way. So I was telling Matt when we were chatting before we started recording the show. I don't scare easily. I guess I don't think so. Um, I'm kind of like desensitized over the years of between horror games and movies at a young age. It takes a lot to like get under my skin. I was playing this demo <laughs> before the show, and I was glad the lights were on in my office while I was playing it. So let me do a little setup. I forget what the exact terminology is, where it's like you're shown an image, and it's like you're given like two choices. Like here's the thing: is it this Rorschach? or this? Oh uh, yeah, Rorschach it's test. Not, yep. not really. It's like a picture of of a of a door. Uh, and it's like, like an A B is, test? Yeah, it's like, is this a clock? Like true or false? And it's like, is this a clock? And it's like a person's face. Is this a clock? It's like a dog. So it does that for a while, like a good five or six things. While there's like creepy music playing in the background. Then after that, it cuts to like this grainy VHS video, and you hear some guy go, Wake up. And you see some like monstrous figure like lurking in the back and getting closer and closer and you can't get off the screen you can't like click it away and it's getting closer and closer and then i i whipped the camera around and i whipped it back and it says today was special and then it continues is this a window and it's like someone's face um I love this. I hate it. <laughs> I love this so hard. I hate it <laughs> because so softly. It's gonna be like an analog horror situation where it's like there's a there's a whole world and lore that's like in these images and these pictures that you're watching. Yeah, and that's like half the game is gonna piece that together. What what's this really trying to tell you? Um, I'm super stoked for this game. Uh, but the best part. <laughs> I clicked on the YouTube teaser for this game and it says a new co-op horror roguelike. What? It's co-op? How is this co-op and how is it roguelike? It's you and your bladder control. <laughs> Will you, you and pee? your diaper. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, yeah the, looks... some of some of those images I did I did uh, scroll through the images for the for our viewers. Oof. Those are fucking horrifying. I, I there's nothing nothing kind of, like gets into my my spooky like hair on the back of my neck sta- you know like standing up more than like big eyes and big mouth. Like yeah. there's something about like, a exaggerated maw. facial features. It yeah. fucking freaks me out, man. Yeah. It freaks me out. I don't know why. Like, 
the scream mask, Ghostface Killer. Oh yeah. Whatever. Ghostface, whatever the Ghostface hell. Ghostface scares you? No, but when I was a kid, that was like I just I could watch the movie, but then I, I would like was think it the about long it. mouth that yes. got you. <laughs> yes. It's that weird long mouth. But I, again, I was a child. Now I'm like, whatever. It's not really that scary. Yeah, it's Ghostface. But yeah. like, you know what used to scare the absolute fucking shit out of me as a kid? Beetlejuice when they would <laughs> when they stretched. Oh, that. Yeah. I was like, no, no, uh, no thanks. That, that didn't get me. It was the scene in the closet when she pulls her face off. Yeah, yeah. that oh, yeah. too. That what? guy, Tim Burton. But when it does the wee. Yeah. From what behind. are we doing, Tim Burton? Yeah. I, I was Nightmares. four. What are we Nightmares. doing? What's wrong with you? Unbelievable. Kid, and that, that was rated PG. PG? Yeah. It, I think it was PG. Yeah. I don't even think it was yeah. PG-13. No, back then we didn't need none of that fucking PG thirteen nonsense. Yeah. Your parents took you to scary shit to scare the shit out of you. I they remember didn't give a fuck about it. I remember the first time I saw that movie, I had a sleepover at my cousin's house, and we were left to our own devices in the basement of his home. And they had a huge TV, a couch, like a whole thing in the basement. And we we're watching Beetlejuice. And the whole time I'm watching, I'm like, I don't think this is appropriate. I don't think I'm sure I should be watching this movie. <laughs> and then he just goes nice fucking model <laughs> and then grabs his <laughs> junk and i'm like this is rated r this it has to be rated r <laughs> no definitely not you just... bunch of losers <laughs> <laughs> uh now i could i that movie is just absolutely phenomenal like the, oh yeah pure comedy I, i'm actually Classic. really excited for the sequel it looks good it looks good it looks good i'm just amazed that my there's a sequel sequels just can just slip right back into the role. I know, but like sequels with that movie. much distance. Those are the ones that work for me. When it's when you wrong. take those you're characters, incorrect. No, when you you're take wrong. the characters and they they okay. they're older now and they're reliving their trauma just like we are, yeah. it's great. Yeah, it's to, fan service. To Matt's point, it is an uphill battle. Yeah, that's because a, you're, it's you're... it's how much can you rely on the nostalgia factor? Like, all right, so so new Ghostbusters. For example, uh -huh. New Ghostbusters is pretty decent, right? Yeah. But trying to get through the New Ghostbusters for the first time is a it's a fight. I feel like those are longer than they should be. They are. Well, yeah, I don't need a fucking. I didn't see either of them. Movie. They're okay, but they have, they have the problem where they have the problem where the movie in your memory mm -hmm. that exists is fucking amazing. Like not like that's not like a. Ghostbusters is like a seminal movie. You know what I mean? That's like a fucking huge, amazing movie for me. Yeah. Meh. Like Beetlejuice, huge, amazing movie for my childhood. Those are. Beetlejuice I, 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 think, I think a lot of them are like. <laughs> I think Beetlejuice 2 has. What it has going for it is that it's not a action like a movie. remake. Yeah. It's not an action movie. Like, Ghostbusters turned into. An action blockbuster summer flick, um, which is never really what it was. Like it was always nope. a dry fucking comedy about bureaucracy, religion, and <laughs> and you know nerds. Like that's what yep. it, that's what it was about. And you get a little bit of that. I, and again, I didn't see it, but like you do get a little bit of that with um, what is it? Egon's granddaughter, I think. Yeah. Like you yeah. get a little bit of that, like touch tone but it, it's just an action movie a million and like this new one was like well, there was no, like but, a million the, stay puff marshmallow here's, men it's like here's here's the problem ghostbusters got made when studios would fucking make movies to make movies mm -hmm. and now everything needs to be like either a franchise or like a fucking billion dollar movie sure. and even beetlejuice didn't want to be that you know what i mean it, yeah. it was a thing based on a thing based on a thing that didn't even fucking really do anything and it was fucking amazing it was great and now beetlejuice 2 has this huge nostalgia trip behind it but the studio making that and the people backing it need it to be successful so they're gonna shove in a bunch of bullshit nostalgia and fan service that i don't fucking want and it's gonna make the movie actively worse than it needs to be it's got sandworms yeah, we're sandworms, sure, Matt. I do, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I hope there's claymation. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
the final little we gotta get through this quick dude i'm fucking fading final stretch of the show we promise you it was happening so we have to give it to you it's the wishlist roundup it is wishlist um these are games that caught our uh eyeballs we have first on the list battle train game looks dope uh yeah who who put this on here this was a me game okay tell us about it it is a tact it's a blend of tactics tactics and deck building this sounds cool. Where you compete in the world's most popular game show, Battle Train. Upgrade your train and deck. Build tracks to the enemy base. Blow them to smithereens with exclusive locomotives. I love um, this trailer. I love, I love all of this. The idea that you're building train tracks. This is like a with, board with, game. With, with, yeah, yeah. With cards and shit. I could totally see And this you're using game. the train to like just ram structures and buildings is insane. Matt, you know and what this reminds I, me I of? I love the art style of this. What does it remind you of? Uh, uh, Fire Tower or where, where was that? Fire Tower. Yeah. Yeah. The board. The that game. A little board. bit. I could totally see that because of the because everything's cornered. Yeah, and you're trying to like push the to, bad like, push thing to out. someone else. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that. This, this, this game trailer. This trailer really cool. yeah. single handedly <laughs> sold me on this game. I uh, it's got a very train. like like Adult Swim kind of cartoon vibe going yeah, on, which totally. I, I think I think I'm really drawn to. Like I'm getting like Venture Brothers kind of art style with Definitely. some of these characters. Give me a demo. It's not indie rift podcast without a metroidvania stuck at the bottom of the seafloor escape a sunken ocean liner in this handcrafted 2D metroidvania. Find powerful upgrades and fight strange bosses. You may be isolated from your shipmates, but you're not alone dun, dun. blight wreck indeed Is, are all of these andy games today i think so May, maybe this looks no, amazing I, uh, so this yeah, i put are. this i put in here um because it's an underwater metroidvania which just i love the the physics of it and the graphical effects and i love the character i love how in the description metroids in bold Metroidvania. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For some reason. <laughs> oh, this um, looks fucking But great. it looks really slick and really yeah. clean and it's it it it's just hitting all the notes and checking the boxes and it's I need it uh, as soon as possible. It sure does look like a Metroidvania. Yeah, so. looks looks cool, very cool art style, boss battles look dope. Mm-hmm. Uh animation looks awesome, gameplay looks top it, notch. It, it looks like it understands the genre, unlike other games we played. Recently. Shut up! Wow, <laughs> we're really just gonna keep doing this. Huh? This is like what we're gonna keep doing for this show. It's Become. just like the. Sh- it's literally right here. Similar games you played. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Become a martial arts master in this survivor-like roguelite. Uh, this is one. Of this I think I dropped this, this one. Is Those are game, words. Yeah. That's uh, survivor-like <laughs> roguelite. Inspired by action movies of the 80s, use your fists, me- feet, and environment to fight off relentless thugs, master powerful combos, enhance your skills, and remember everything around you is a weapon. Uh, do you want to be Jackie Karate Survivor? Yeah. Do you want to be Jackie Chan? Do you want to be Jackie Chan in a survivor game? This is 2D Jackie Chan stunt master. That's what it is. This looks so fucking fun. <laughs> Look at him, he's fucking throwing stuff all over the place. He knocks over a bunch of pipes, he's kicking fucking shopping carts into people. I, I'm playing this game in my mind already. Now, why? Okay, a couple of things nope. here. Nope. A lot of thugs. A lot of thugs. A lot of thugs infiltrating a grocery store. Oh, he kicked a baby. He did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he I'm kicked in. a baby. I'm in. Look at this. This is great. Yeah, this looks awesome. Really cool physics. This is the kind of evolution that the survival horror genre needs. S- survivor genre? Survivor like. Survivor-like. Survive, survive, Vampire survive, 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 survivor like. Speaking of horror and surviving things, Nightmare Operator is an action horror shooter about hunting yokai in the haunted ruins of Tokyo. Combat fuses the tense shooting gameplay of classic survival horror with the skill based mechanics of execution of, and execution of fighting games and spectacle fighters. That's a lot of sentence. It's a lot of words. It's a lot of words. Yeah, but it word salad. Great. Word salad. That's like someone ran it through like a little like a thesaurus. <laughs> it's been yeah. out. It's spit that out. <laughs> um, um, but this has that. Oh, big mouths. It's big got big mouths. mouths. Big Does it tongues. have big mouths? Yeah. I was expecting this. You guys. I oh, mean, this, this is cool. 
this is plain and simple like an indie game big uh, mouths <laughs> big mouths it happened very um, quickly the enemy design looks great i love the the tech the weapons um yeah, it's not cool. it's not trying to be like a resident evil or a silent hill it's doing its own thing but it looks like the old ps1 crunchy i really like uh, this goodness i love so much ah um, fuck no I need it stop it there's too <laughs> many good games to Why? this week it's, yeah put worse games on this list oh sure that's what we'll do <laughs> <laughs> i'll be honest man i this looks fucking awesome dude it, it really good, does good find I fucking love it you're like you're like making them into into static yeah man yeah or like ghosts it's yeah. like got some fatal frame vibes a little bit with the yeah. whole ghost situation. Oh, I see. What I mean, actually, yeah, it is all static. Yeah, and like sometimes well, like, she she look, freezes them. The the, the second ah, the first, big tongue. The, the first Sorry. picture is the tongue with the mouth. I love Sorry. it. Sorry. Damn, that's a nightmare that's a, operator. That's great that's find. Some, that's some great design right there. I like that. I like that. I'm all. I, I actually. It's scary, but I like it. Um, okay, so this last one uh, I put on here a while ago, and we we were. I don't think we ever talked about it um oh yeah this has no steam page yet no no it's just a youtube but it looks page. incredible yeah yeah it looks really Whoa, cool dude what? um it's called it project long tail um and i don't really know how this isn't super popular um 3d platformer adventure game this is so pretty you're like mm -hmm. a cool alien looking creature um I have no like I don't even remember how this came across. I think it came across on Twitter. Um but we're going to skip ahead a little bit. It's got you know high-end cinematics. Um I want to get to some you of the You can turn right. into a butt donkey. Hell yeah, you can. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, given, like, Look at that doggy's butt. It's given like PS2 GameCube. I was thinking yeah. that um, myself. I, I was thinking yeah. uh like Jack and Dax survives. Yeah, man. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, it, it's yeah. it doesn't have a Steam page, so it's yeah. it's probably far off. <laughs> but um if you go to longtailgame.com, um, which is in the show notes if you want to click that, you can check it out and you can subscribe to their newsletter. Uh, they they have a Discord, uh, they have a Tickety Talk, a YouTube, Twitter, Bache they Libre. Are, they're gonna get harassed on Discord, like yeah. This is let me see the, uh, the second official, this call ends. <laughs> I'm gonna open the official trailer. So you can actually see it in in uh, in movement. But yeah, it's uh, got a lot of charm. It looks like a a real fun 3D adventure game. Yeah, very cool. Very it very do. cool. It do. Collectathon, it seems. You know, like you're collecting cool things. Turn it, turn it. You know, there's a little the little dog donkey you were talking about. Oh yeah, man, donkey butt. You could you could uh, surf your on on surfboards. You sand surfing. I like that. Ooh, cool enemy designs. Look at that. Yeah. So yeah, that came across, and uh, I thought it was cool. So yeah, check that out. Check it out, nerds. Fucking um, nerds. incredible news, Matt. Before we What's leave. That? Your favorite game ever, aside from No yeah. Man's Sky, is a dollar fifty right now. Patch Quest is a dollar fifty. If you don't buy this, I don't like you. <laughs> Correct. Ninety percent off. Patch Quest. Matt has spoken about this game five times. At least so, five times two, between. Mm, so yeah, at least five times. So listeners, to understand how much Matt loves this game, I love Matt, this game. Matt made a YouTube short on our. Channel I made a YouTube about short this about game. this game. It's true. I did His work first to promote and only this time. game. <laughs> I've done things, unspeakable things. It's a dollar fifty. Buy this game, you stupid idiots! <laughs> you jerks! Isn't that that's how we get listeners, right? Oh, they got plushies. They got plushies. They do have plushies. Oh my god, it's an axolotl plushie. Fuck. I just want to know what this guy's gonna do next. Uh. Let's check. Just give me. Do you got any anything Lychee Game Labs? You working on anything? Nothing. I don't like. I don't like that answer. Do things. Speaking of doing things, we're gonna get out of here because it's we the end of the show. Yeah. Thank you so Good much job. for listening and watching, ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, if you want to be a part of the show, it's so easy to do so. Join our Patreon. Patreon.com slash IndieRift. You can join our Discord where you can ask us any questions about any games. Maybe you want to show us uh, some cool stuff. And we could be like, cool, no problem. Uh, Matt is typing in the doc as we speak right now. Seriously. Neon, you stupid dumb idiot. Why are you so dumb? Go poopening. Go pooping. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Thank You're you, welcome. Andy. Words of wisdom. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, viewers. And <laughs> as always, me, please be excellent to each other. <laughs>